This expedition with Wild Wonderful World and Iron Man into Mozambique is to visit Karangani or revisit uh, to catch up with Ellery and Drew and the team on the ground to find out how Iron Man and their equipment has been making a difference. And then we were going to be heading down to Maputo Special Reserve and we were invited back to trial their new 4x4 camps, the rustic camps. So it's been a bit of an adventure trip and um, yeah, the, the main aims is been to touch base with everybody and just to have a really, really awesome time. Hey everybody, welcome to the Kruger National Park. We have just entered through the Malalan Gate and we are on our way to the Crocodile Bridge where we're going to meet up with Michelle from Wild Wonderful World. We have done previous trips with them. Check the links to those episodes in the description below. They did some elephant coloring and some elephant conservation work. This time around we're going to the Maputo Special Reserve and also to Karangani Game Reserve and we're going to do some wild camping. Camping. For now we are looking for some animals in the Kruger. It's beautiful to be here because it had a lot of rain so it's nice and green and I'm looking forward to this trip because it's wet season in Mozambique so I think we're going to be playing in some mud and I haven't been to the Maputo Special Reserve or Karangani Game Reserve so I'm very excited for that as well. For this trip we've got Dion Anderson joining us and Mick Van Sale and me and Michelle and we're gonna be having lots of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do like the channel please like and subscribe and here we go. So far some pretty cool sightings, seen some elephants, some rhino, we just saw a martial eagle, I think it's a juvenile, but the park is looking stunning, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be in the Kruger, I haven't been here for years. It's a 10 day trip in total, two nights of those being in the Kruger National Park. First night in Crocodile Bridge where we'll all come together from me from Hoodsprayt and Iron Man guys from Johannesburg. Then crossing into Mozambique through the delightful Kamati Port border post. We've got three nights up in Karangani to touch base and catch up with the Karangani ground team, including Ellery and Drew, followed by four nights in Maputo Special Reserve, now known as Maputo National Park, to test out their new rustic 4x4 camping routes for a bit of an adventure, and then a final night at Berhendal in the Kruger on the way back home. <laughs> what are we seeing? Bats, epilated fruit bats, I think. My picture's better even though his lens is bigger. <laughs> Let's see a <your> picture. <laughs> Hold on, let me zoom out. Very cool. <laughs> they're so fluffy. Yeah, they are. they're so cute. Morning, Mick. Hey, Sleep off. Uh, 
for the most part, yes. Rara. Everybody's got pajamas on at these campsites. Okay, we've got our routing on Guru Maps, uh, so we're going to cross the border and then we've decided to do everything we can to avoid Maputu and the fence line road that we took in the dry season is now unpassable completely because it's all black cotton soil. So we're going to drive on the main highway towards Mwamba and then that's as far as our tar is going to go. Um, we've got a routing of the back roads through the little villages and communities and hopefully that'll get us up to Karangani. Um, I have driven it once, there are some sticky spots, but it's gonna look awesome. We are officially in Mozambique. It took about three hours at the Kamati Port border post. The system where they check your vehicle details uh, was quite slow. That system alone took us about two hours standing in the queue. But we're in Mozambique and uh, interesting fact that Michelle said is that that tar road just after the border post, you are not allowed to put your elbow out of the window. It's a weird rule that, but um, I wonder and Mick also asked that what do Land Cruisers and Land Rover people do on that road? Now we're on a gravel road on the way to Karangani. It's going to be a long day. It is wet and I think it might get messy. How's it guys? Are you well? Are things in Mozambique? All good? All good? All good? Hey cutie pie. Fun. I am, but I, best re I reckon it's best done at about 70, 80 k's an hour. <laughs> what, okay? Are you having fun? So much fun. Like I get it. to splash all the puddles at the front because no one slowed down before me. <laughs> the we just actually pulled over for lunch this afternoon. It's now. One o'clock and we're just over halfway to Karangani. So we're just stopping for, stopping for some chow. on this road there's mud there's some sand and every now and then we gun the cars through about 70 80 you get a bit of wheel spin <laughs> I'm having so much fun and these foam cell pros are just eating up this road in Karangani after a few muddy splashes that was lots of fun happy to be here it looks stunning hi nice to meet you hi well, guys welcome hoping the road wasn't too bad stunning it's beautiful yeah, yeah. It's always nice to visit Karangani. This time I see it's, it's very green, it's very lush. It's a bit humid, it's a bit hot, but we saw a lot coming here. And it's always nice to be here.
We are currently at the Karangani Mbilu workshop. Um, it's the headquarters of most of the things that happens here. We're shortly going to hear from Ellery and we're going to join their operations for the day. We're not exactly sure what yet, um, but we're going to head out into the field. We'll have a rad adventure out of it, um, but also help them with whatever it is that they need to do. So, you know, our focus here at Karangani is really holistic landscape conservation. And uh, in order to achieve that, you've got to consider all elements of the landscape. It's not just high profile, uh, easy to watch animals. And, and in some of those things, they are equally as easy to watch, but unknown. And one of the examples I can give you here is the, the species of fish that we find in our freshwater pan systems, and that's the killifish. And the killifish we find in this area is uh, predominantly the turquoise killifish. A spectacular little bright blue in the males fish that lives in a murky grey water pan and it's indicative of a healthy pan system not very common and and because so relatively unknown really not factored into overall landscape management but when you start digging into the background and the needs of these killifish and what they represent in terms of health of the system you start understanding that they're much they're a piece of a much larger puzzle and so to, to any landscape conservation effort, you need to consider that it's made up of all these multiple systems and ecosystems that ultimately present themselves in the, in the habitat that you'd see in a standard documentary that showcases big animals. So, so killifish is a, is a highlight for me and, and something that uh, I think people should know about and focus on, the small things. Towards understanding these killifish and the role they play in the ecosystem, we, uh, a number of years back, I think in 2018 or so, reached out to a specialist group out of Belgium um, and formed a collaborative research group with uh, KU Leuven University. Uh, they, we invited them to come out and, and investigate our killifish population, start the basis of our freshwater ecology uh, research platform, looking at sediment levels, diapause, life cycles, influence on the environment, and of course, answer management questions towards the importance of these freshwater pans in the system. Now, I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to say, go to the international specialist, but one of the things we've done here at Karangani is insisted that all research done on site incorporates and capacitates local um, skills. Going forward, we're going to look at Mozambique through a different lens. You know, all the little things, the, the killifish that may be represented in other conservation areas, now Mozambique has that in-house skilled capacity to start that investigation. Joe caught a small crab as well. Fairy shrimp. Yeah. Cool name. They are so pretty. When you, when you My intention to go swimming. <laughs> okay, you gotta tell me what happened. <laughs> so this puddle's super deep right where Ellery is standing and is about to get stuck. And the bank is silky smooth and very slippery. So I was doing what he did, but way less gracefully and well, I went for a bit of a swim. <laughs> At least it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've managed to catch some boatmen. <laughs> just, just, uh, so that's that like water artlippers. Yeah, you, you see them in swimming pools. Yeah, yeah, so the water one keys. I just yeah, got excited because yeah. of the red yeah. tail. It's uh, not that. Hmm. We gotta keep looking. Um, actually it looks like a might even be a female with eggs and they're translucent so you can, you can actually see inside them you can see their stomach and their egg part the concept of looking at small things and understanding that the, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of parts it, it, it excites me I, I like the fact that everything's interconnected I like knowing that we have to be responsible in our actions whether it's considering ourselves from a Karangani reserve level, from a landscape level in Mozambique, from a regional level in Mozambique, from a global scale. You, you need to consider all the elements that make up a natural system and look after those. You tip the balance in one way or the other, the ramifications of that are, are unknown and often very damaging to unexpected or in unexpected ways. So my passion really lies in understanding and driving that holistic approach to conservation.
So what happens to him now? So he's being preserved in absolute alcohol, so they can do genetic testing, which is often um, one of the ways to separate between genus and species, and then put it under a microscope to see if there's any physical characteristics that relate to that genetic trait. Yeah. Like, oh. Hey buddy, I'm looking for 12 of your cousins, the big ones. Yeah. On a plate with rice. Dion, what did you catch? Nothing. Uh, water winkies. <laughs> <laughs> and, mud. and mud. In and mud. I mean, you know, things are always progressing here at Karangoy. You know, I talked about holistic landscape conservation. And, you know, one of our ethos is to partner with like-minded people and to, to encourage collaboration. So, I mean, like what, what we do with you guys in Ironman, it's a, it's a collaboration and ultimately a collaboration towards a conservation outcome. Um, and so since you were last here, I mean, we've started a number of collaborations. We are busy with an EWT or Endangered Wildlife Trust uh, cheetah metapopulation expansion program. We are busy engaging with the, the Black Rhino range expansion program through WWF. Um, those are just some of the key ones that have happened since you guys were last here. But uh, the, the focus is really on collaboration and like-minded collaborations towards holistic conservation. It's one of the casinos, so it's a tadpole for a frog. And it's either a red-legged casino frog or a bubbling casino. I think that side, that side is the hot side. Yeah, let's move. Yo. That one's like guppies. Yeah, very similar to a guppy. The killifish show, this particular species of killifish, shows uh, sexual dimorphism. So you can separate the males from the females based on their color. And this is a male. It's a particular color morph that we have here. And you can see that the tail's got the black and white barring. Sometimes they've got uh, red and black barring, sometimes black and yellow, sometimes red and yellow. And then the body, as you said, that's white scales with the red edging, sometimes turquoise blue. And, but that's typically a male. The females will be more sort of gray and brown. To, to my eye, that looks like a, a female on the left and a male on the right. Um, the female is generally duller. She's quite bright, but normally at that size, you'll already start seeing that big dorsal fin, the, the sort of the edging on the tails coming through. So I think that one on the right now is a female, and then the, the bigger one on the left, a female. Yeah, it's this is Pan 39, which is a, an important one for us to sample. Uh, the last time the research team was out here, they managed to capture a specimen of a new species of fairy shrimp. So the idea is to follow up, hopefully get another specimen um, that we can then so preserve and send away to Belgium. Uh, they need to still describe and, and identify actually which species it is. And at this stage, it's believed to be a new species. So let's see what we can find. So, you know, part of this freshwater ecology, it's not just killifish. Killifish are in their world, big fish in their little pond. I mean, they're the apex predator. But with that, you get a range of arthropods or um, crustaceans that live in the freshwater pan systems. Similar life cycles to the killifish in that they can go through a diapause during the dry season where their eggs lay dormant in the sediment and then after the rain falls they, they hatch and, and grow. And one of those uh, crustaceans that we find in this area that's uh, a good indicator of health is the uh, fairy shrimp. Now fairy shrimps, so we've sampled a number of pans, not all of them, and we aim to sample as many as we can. but. Um, We've been sampling pans for the presence and absence of fairy shrimp, as well as the species diversity. And because many of these pans are somewhat unexplored or you know, undocumented in terms of research, we've already discovered a number of different species of, of fairy shrimp, as well as potentially new genus of fairy shrimp and crustaceans. So we're talking new discoveries here, um, which is exciting. I get excited by it, but uh, yeah. I've got a fairy shrimp, caught one in the net. Yeah, that's like seriously small. <laughs> that's so cool. So pretty. Have you ever seen one like this? I haven't, no, I haven't seen the red ones before. <laughs> Professor Mick has got one. I got one, I caught one. Contributing to conservation here, Dickie. Yeah. Single handedly. <laughs> yeah. 
The, the Karangani Killifish Expedition Day was, was most certainly an adventure, a hot adventure, but just an awesome opportunity to get involved on the ground with the type of research that's going on in these remote places. I don't think many of us often have an opportunity to experience what it's like to do ground conservation work and research and being out in the field and swooping for, for killifish and fairy shrimp all day was a lot of fun. So we're at the next sort of pan in the sequence. This one is referred to as long pan. And also in, in our last attempts here, we found one of the new species. So again, we're looking at trying to recapture it so we can get it properly identified and maybe even classified. So predominantly on the fairy shrimp side. And uh, what we're finding right now is well, comparisons we haven't seen before in terms of size and color. So exciting, yeah. yeah. I really didn't know we are going to be looking for fish uh, coming to Karangani, but this is absolutely spectacular. The amount of life in these puddles is crazy and the fish are so beautiful. You always drive past these little puddles, but there's so much life in them. And Ellery is uh, obviously very, very passionate about it, which is awesome. When it comes to collaborations, you know, the, the easy assumption is that a conservation body partners with researchers, university institutions, and that's all great. And there is research that needs to be done. But the reality is you can't do that research in this environment without tools of the trade. And this is where I think our like-mindedness is. So, you know, we utilize you guys from a suspension point of view, because quite frankly, our vehicles that conduct all this research can't handle the terrain it takes to go find the remote pan that has a killifish in it. Likewise, our security, we can't achieve the security results we do without the tools of the trade. So like-minded collaboration doesn't necessarily mean a research institution. It means someone who understands the value in what we're trying to achieve, and together, and in a partnership, we can move forward and achieve it. We're doing some serious off-roading now. Uh, we're on a road that doesn't look like a road. You can see the tire tracks are there, but um, some serious, serious four-wheel driving. Check this out. Oh, there's the road again. What's for lunch? I had leftovers. <laughs> nice. That's nice. Small sausages. Oh, yeah, Just eat it, you can take them. No, no, I was going to open up the salad here oh, that okay. we had from last night. What are you having for lunch? I'm going to make a cheesy roll with ham, leftover salad, and Joe's homegrown herbs. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself? I'm having the best day. I've never even seen a fairy shrimp before and today we've spent the whole day collecting them, so whole new experience. How's your bounty been? Um, subpar compared to other members of the group, but you cannot fault my effort. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> saying if, if these turn out to be a, a new species of fairy shrimp, both new species and in a new location, we'll, we'll call them the iron fairies of the iron man. So this is a, a pan up in the, one of our northern areas that we haven't actually sampled before for fairy shrimp. Um, so it's a new location for us to find fairy shrimp and we found, um, it looks like a little, quite a, quite a significant hatching of them and also no predatory killifish, so the assumption would be that because there's no killifish they, um, the fairies are doing well here and then maybe we, that's why we're catching more of them. So yeah, first, first record for this pan that I'm aware of and I mean when that happens there's really a strong likelihood that you find a new species or some new morph, so pretty exciting. We basically spent the day uh, pan hopping, trying to find as many different specimens as possible of the killifish and the fairy shrimp. And then we ended the day in a huge open clearing um, 
along that same pan system to, to have our wild camp sleep out. We basically journeyed the whole day north and then spent the whole day traveling back south the following day. So we had to find somewhere to base ourselves for that night. And Ellery found us a stunning open plains and campsite and then made me move my vehicle because it's blocking the sundowner. <laughs> Uh, so we're on the road from Karangani to Maputu Special Reserve, now Maputu National Park. Uh, we're winding down towards Maputu and then we're going to cut across to the National Park itself. And then we have a whole load of treats in store for us. We're going to try out their new 4x4 route. So we have absolutely no idea what's in store for tonight. <laughs>